Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me for Morning Flow. Get my introductory talk out of the way. I'm Leo Gray here for Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center. Coming to you from my house because I uh, can't get in the studio today because it's Labor Day and the building's closed. Um, and I am here for Morning Flow 815 Monday, Thursday, and Friday. On Thursdays and Fridays, I'm in Ruth Hardy Park. You can see our whole schedule at urbanyoga.org or Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center on Facebook. And you can also see where our tip jar is there so you can make contributions to support our Zoom classes. So we'll just start out sitting or kneeling today. You don't have to sit just the way I'm sitting. Sit so that you are comfortable. Feel into the ground in contact that you have with the floor. Keep in mind the length of your spine. So sitting tall without being stiff or rigid. If you want to, close your eyes. Notice your breath, allowing it to start getting slower and deeper. Taking in the movements of your breathing. And whatever sensations accompany these movements, and moving beyond these starting points to take in the whole body. Notice whatever sensations are present for you throughout your body. Making particular note, if anything doesn't feel so good, if there's any stiffness, any soreness as you check in with yourself, make note of these things so that you can keep them in mind during practice using the freedom you have to skip or modify any part of the practice I'll be doing. You're always welcome to do less than I'm doing. You're always welcome to do a bit more than I'm doing. You might know a variation or an extension that I don't speak to. You can find the practice that's best for you by listening to your body and exercising choice. If in addition to these shared intentions, you wish to set your own more specific personal intention for practice, let that form up and sink in for a few breaths. And let's take three deep cleansing breaths before we start to move around. In through the nose, out through the mouth with a sigh. Let your eyes open up. And starting from the top, let's go to the neck. Necks are often stiff in the morning. Let your chin come down towards your chest. We'll start some nice, slow, gentle circles. Roll your right ear towards your shoulder and let your head tip back. You know what a circle is. Just go like as slowly as you can stand. Sometimes the slowing down is the biggest challenge. And if you feel into a spot that's particularly tight, a segment of the circle, maybe you pause and rock back and forth and help ease out some of that tension. When you finish the next circle, change direction. I don't know about you all, I get a kick out of the sounds 
that this makes when you move your head really slowly in circles, at least the sounds of this particular 51 year old neck. All the times I move my head throughout the day, I don't think the neck generally makes sound. Not that I notice, but when you slow it down, it sounds very involved in there. And when you finish the next circle, just look forward again, lift your chin. And let's take some seated cow and cat breaths. Inhale, bring your heart forward, let your head tip back. Exhale, bring your heart back, let your head tip forward. Follow your own breath. We don't have to go at the same pace. Try to use the whole inhale for the forward movement and the whole exhale for the backward movement. And at the end of your next exhale, sit up again. We'll take some side bends, reach your hands out to the side, rest your fingertips on the floor. Inhaling, raise your right arm up alongside your ear. As you exhale, reach across to the left. Feel from length from your hip up through your fingertips. Just let your head be wherever your neck is comfortable. Inhale to come upright and exhale to let your hand down. Inhale, raise your left arm. Exhale, reach across to the right. Inhale, come upright. Exhale, let your arm come down. Let's come up onto our hands and knees. Open your hands way up. Bring your shoulders above your wrists and your hips above your knees. Reach back with your right foot, press the ball of your foot against the floor. Let your leg lengthen for a couple of breaths. With an inhale, pick your foot up and reach straight back. Maybe think of making a footprint on the wall. With your next inhale, reach your left arm forward. Fingertips reaching for the opposite wall. Thumb pointing up. Exhale, draw your knee toward your elbow, round your back. Inhale, extend out again. Let's do that. Two more times. And then bend the leg, reach back, see about taking a bind. Deepen the stretch here. Release and lower down. Reach back, press into the ball of your left foot for a couple of breaths. Inhaling, pick your foot up, reach straight back through the sole of your foot. With your next inhale, reach your right hand forward. Exhale, draw knee towards elbow, round your spine. Inhale, extend out. Two more times. Bend that raised leg, reach back. See about that bind. 
Kick against your hand, lift your knee, lift your chin. Release and lower down. And we're going to take some twists from here. I'm realizing I got all these props in exactly the wrong place so they can get in my way. Okay. <laughs> so, starting from table, we're going to take a twist that starts at the waist, works up the spine, and comes into an arm extension. So, we'll go first to the left. So inhaling, twist through the lower back, middle back, upper back. These are small movements. Then the arm goes out and up. Look up towards your hand. Exhale, come down. Reach your arm across under you. And let's do that two more times. Inhale, open up. Reach up. Look up. Exhale, come down. Reach across. Maybe it goes a little further. One more. And nice and gently, let your shoulder come down to the floor. And the side of your head come down to the floor. And maybe that's plenty to do. Maybe you stay right there. If you want to explore more, there's some extensions for arm and leg. You could reach back and press into the ball of your right foot like we did a couple minutes ago. Or you could reach back in the air with that foot. This can make you roll onto your back. You might also opt to bring that foot over by your left hand. You can keep your right hand on the floor or reach it up towards the ceiling and rotate your arm in the socket like an owl turning your head or fold your arm across your lower back. And you can play with arm extensions without moving your leg or leg extensions without moving your arm. I like to do a bit of everything. And maybe you'd just like to stay where we started here with that knee and that hand on the ground. As we come out, if you did move your right hand, bring it back and plant it to stabilize. And then if you did move your right leg, bring that knee back to the ground. Press into that right hand, big inhale, open up, reach up, look up. Exhale, come down. And take three or four cow and cat breaths before we do all that on the other side. And when you're ready, come back to the table. Going to the right, inhale, twisting through lower spine, middle spine, upper spine. Extending right arm out and up. Exhaling, come down, thread the needle, or reach across. Two more times. Then take your time, let your shoulder come down, rest your head on the ground, and choose your adventure. Extend your leg. How and if you want. And likewise, your arm. Maybe one side doesn't feel the same as the other. Maybe you choose different extensions. And starting to rewind, if you did move your left hand, bring it back and ground into it. If you did move your left leg, bring it back in line, plant your knee, big inhale, open up and reach up and look up. And exhale, come down and take some cow and cat breaths again. And we'll start to stand, step your right foot up between your hands and step your left foot up to meet it 
hang out in your forward fold, swaying back and forth, bending and straightening your legs. Do what you like with your hands. They might hang, they might hold your elbows, they might clasp behind your head. See how much movement your legs want, how much swaying your body wants. Slowly nod your head, yes. Shake your head, no. Inhale, lift up halfway, press your hands to the front of your legs. Feel for the crown of your head reaching forward away from your tailbone. Exhaling, relax down. Inhale, roll up to standing, hands above your head. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Let your hands hang at your sides. Raise your right shoulder towards your ear. Slide it back and let it down. And your left shoulder up, back, and down. Inhale, reach out to the sides. Exhaling, reach for your shoulder blades and hug yourself or come to eagle arms. If you're coming to eagle, move your elbows and hands forward and up. Bringing in more space between the shoulder blades. Inhale, open up again. And exhale, cross the other way. We'll be working a lot on opening the heart region today, not just the front where we think of the heart, but the sides of that space, the back of that space, the whole shoulder girdle. The beautiful space where the heart and the lungs live, give them more room to work. Inhale, open. Exhale, relax down. Inhale, out and up. Interlace your fingers, flip your palms up, and look up at your hands and lift up your heart. Inhale to bring yourself upright. Exhale to bend to the left heel for length through both arms. Try not to pick up your right heel or let your right shoulder curl forward past your ear. Inhale to come upright and exhale to bend to the right. Inhale to come up. Exhale, let your arms come down. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold down. Make your way to plank. Spend a few breaths settling into that first plank. Let your knees down if you like and do a shorter plank anytime we're in plank. Whatever plank is better for you. Hips coming down in line with shoulders and heels or shoulders and knees. Exhaling slowly lower all the way down. See how slow you can go. Don't stop breathing if you go real slow and need another breath or two. Let everything go, untuck your toes, rest your chin, or rest on one cheek if it doesn't feel good to rest your chin. Reach your arms to the sides. You're gonna use the floor like a great big prop here to do some shoulder opening and some twisting. So grabbing the floor with your left hand, walk your right hand in towards your body, press away from the floor. So you rock up onto your left hip and the left side of your head is on the floor. And maybe that's plenty to do, maybe you stay there. Or like with the twist we were doing on our hands and knees, we have options here. You might lift your right leg away from your left and let the heel drift back. If that feels okay and you wanna go further, you bend that knee and just see what happens. Maybe the weight of the leg 
draws the foot towards the floor. Maybe it touches down, maybe it doesn't. And your right hand could stay right where it is or it could reach up. There's that rotation, similar to what we already did, or fold your arm across your low back, also similar to what we did in the twist starting from table. Feel where the breath goes in this funny shape. So what do these deep breaths accomplish here? What do they reveal? And take your time to rewind. If you moved your right hand, bring it back and plant it. If you moved your right leg nice and slowly, raise your foot, straighten the leg, lower it to rest on top of your other leg and slowly walk your right hand back out. Come back onto your belly, rest on your chin and rest on one cheek for a couple of breaths. And when you're ready, grab the floor with your right hand and start to walk your left hand in, come up onto your right side. And maybe you play with moving your left leg. Maybe you explore moving your left hand, your left arm. If you moved your left hand, bring it back to stabilize. If you moved your left leg, take your time to bring it back to rest against your other leg and walk your left hand back out. Rest for a couple of breaths at center. And bring your hands in under your shoulders. Inhale, lift your head and chest, come to the height of heart opener that you like, maybe a low cobra, maybe a higher cobra, maybe an up dog. Each time, choose your heart opener, listening to your lower back. Exhale and rock back, maybe pass through table and take your time to find your way up into downward facing dog. And walk your dog for a few breaths, pedal your feet up and down. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or hop forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, come down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, come down, plant your hands and make your way to plank. When you're ready, exhale, lower halfway. Inhale, bring your heart forward. Maybe you drop your knees. Maybe it's upward dog time. Exhale, back and up to downward dog. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, come down. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. I'm gonna grab a sip of my water and switch to the other axis because I realized when I'm up here and standing, my head is off screen. <laughs> Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale down, make your way to your plank. When you're ready, exhaling lower halfway. Inhale, bring your heart forward. 
Exhale, back and up. Inhale, raise your right leg up high. Keep the leg long and stack that hip above the left hip. Look under your right arm. And square your hip down. Exhale, draw your knee towards your right elbow. Inhale, reach up again. Exhale, draw your knee towards your nose, round your back and plant your foot between your hands. Come up on your fingertips, maybe on blocks. Inhale, reach forward, reach up, crescent lunge. Imagine dropping an anchor from your pelvis to the ground. Exhale, sink forward in your hips, lower your arms. Inhale, glide up again. Let's do that three more times. Reach your right hand forward, left hand back, twist to the left. Come back to your center and twist to the right. Come back to your center. Exhale, bring your hands down. And step your left foot forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, come down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, down. Make your way to your plank. So I guess today I'm just going to bring my head off camera sometimes. Exhaling lower halfway. Inhale, bring your heart forward. Exhale, back and up. Inhale, raise your left leg up. Stack your hips, look under your left arm. Square your hip back down. Exhaling, draw your knee towards your left elbow. Inhale, reach your leg high. Exhaling, draw your knee towards your nose, round your back and plant your foot between your hands. Come up on your fingertips. Inhale, reach forward and up, find crescent lunge. Once you're steady on your feet, exhale, rock forward in your hips, lower your arms. Inhale, glide back and up. Three more times. Forward and down, back and up. Smooth movement, smooth breath. From the top of the movement, twist to the right. Come back to center and twist to the left. Come back to center. Exhaling, let your hands down. Step your left foot, no, step your right foot forward. <laughs> Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. And we'll work on some warrior poses and some flow there with maybe some different variations focusing on the heart space. Bring your right foot forward, left foot back for a warrior one. Uh, have some space between your feet, like one foot is on each of the set of railroad tracks. Back foot at about a 45 degree angle, feel for round, grounding in the outer edge of the back foot and the ball of the front foot. Bring your arms up. Let your shoulders relax down a little. Turn your pinkies in towards each other. There we go with my camera angle again. <laughs> now exhale and let your arms come out to the sides. Come behind you. Interlace your fingers. Inhale, reach your knuckles towards the floor. Lift your chin, lift your chest. And exhale, bow towards your knee, 
And maybe reach your hands up away from your body as you bow down. If that's too much, just let your hands rest on your lower back there. Unclasp your hands, let your arms fall, let them sweep forward and stand again. And bring your elbows to your rib cage. Lower your forearms parallel to the floor. Keeping elbows in, inhale, slide your hands out. Exhale, slide them forward. Let's do it three more times. Inhale, exhale. Yeah, if you can keep your elbows close to your body, you can get more into the muscles in the mid back. Bring your hands to your hips. Pivot your left foot open more, slide the line behind your right foot, setting up warrior two feet. I'll just rearrange here to the warrior two stuff. Shoulders squared above hips, arms to the sides. Look out over your right fingertips. Inhale, rotate your hands back. Exhale, rotate forward. Let's do that three more times. Turn your right palm up, inhale, reverse warrior. Lower body stays still, tip back, reach up. Right hand up above your face, looking up at your hand. Left hand resting lightly on your leg, resting to your hip for support or sliding across your low back. So these binds, when you bring your arms behind your back, opening the shoulder, opening the hot space. Exhale, tip forward, rest your right forearm lightly on your right thigh, reach your left arm up overhead. Maybe circle this arm, more opening for the shoulder, and maybe extend the bottom arm forward or to the side for some additional core engagement. See the lower body stays where it is. Even if you don't do the arm extension, you don't want to dump your weight into this arm in this like core work. Bring the bottom arm back in. And let's do warrior dance three times back and forth. Inhale, reverse warrior, tip back, reach up. Exhale to side angle, tip forward, reach forward. And then if you want, we can play with a bind here. Maybe that's part of your practice, maybe it isn't. If you want to, you could reach the bottom arm down on your legs, reach the top arm behind you, and you get your hands hooked under your thigh or your butt, and then peel that left shoulder back. Think of turning your torso parallel to the line of that right foot. Release your mind. Let's inhale up to warrior two. Let's dance to gentle warrior. Inhale, glide up, straighten the leg, raise your arms, turn your head to the left. Exhale, bend your knee, lower your arms, turn your head to the right. Three more, inhale and exhale. Straighten the right leg most of the way. Setting up for triangle, draw the left hip back. Slide the right hand forward. Tip to find your triangle. You can do a half bind here. Some folks like to bring that top arm behind the back, peel the shoulder back some more. Or you can just leave it raised. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Inhale, reach your arm forward, stand. Right hand to right hip, pivot on the ball of your back foot, and step forward. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold down. Make your way to your plank. 
Exhaling, lower halfway. Inhale, bring your heart forward. Exhale, back and up. Make your way to forward fold again. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, come down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Warrior series on the other side. Left foot forward, right foot back. Setting up the warrior one, feet and legs. Arms up, shoulders relax down a bit, pinkies in towards each other. Couple of breaths in standard warrior one. Let your arms float out to the sides, come behind you, interlace your fingers the opposite way. From one to the way you did before. Inhale, lift your chin, lift your heart, reach your knuckles towards the floor. Exhale, bow towards your knee, and maybe reach your hands up away from your body. Release your hands, let them fall, and sweep forward. Back up to warrior one. Draw your elbows down against your ribs. Lower your forearms parallel to the floor. And four times, inhale, slide hands out. Exhale, slide them to the front. Then bring your hands to your hips. Pivot your right foot open, slide the line behind your left foot. Find your warrior two, feet and legs. Extend your arms, shoulders over hips, look over your left fingertips. Inhale, rotate back. Exhale, rotate forward. Three more breaths. Then turn your left palm up. Inhale, reverse warrior, tip back, and reach out, breathe deeply into your left side. Exhale, tip forward, reach forward, side angle. Circle your right arm, if you like. Extend your left arm, if you like, to play with the extension there. And let's do the warrior dance. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle. Two more times. And then if you like, we can play with that bind. Maybe one side, it's easier than the other. That doesn't mean we should skip the other side side where it's not as easy is the side that needs more attention. Release your bind. Make your way back up to warrior two. We'll dance to gentle warrior. Inhale, glide up. Exhale, glide down. And then straighten the left leg most of the way. Draw your right hip back. Slide your left hand forward. Tip to find your triangle. Petting the dog is always a good extension. <laughs> Bring your right hand to your right hip. Inhale, reach your left hand forward and stand. Left hand to left hip. Move it onto the ball of your right foot and step forward. And we'll play with some balancing before we make our way back to sitting and start to cool down. Time is flying by. 
So a great balance for heart space is uh, dancer pose. Now in dancer pose, there are different options you might explore with how you grip your foot. So dancer is when we lift one heel towards the body and grab the foot. So the simplest thing might seem to be grabbing the outer edge of the foot. When I grab the outside edge of my foot, when I start to draw my knee back, the knee is more likely to go out to the side. We want to keep the knee at center line like that. So a way you might do that is to reach your hand to the side, rotate your arm so your thumb's pointing down, your palm is pointing back. And then when you come back here, you can grab the inner edge of your foot. Opposite hand should be at the heart. I was missing that for steadiness, pressing to the sternum. Now I want to draw my knee back. The knee's more likely to stay in line with the hip and get better, uh, better extension, better opening in the hip, and better alignment in the posture. So grab your foot however you like. Draw the knee back. Let the weight of the leg tip the torso. And if you like, extend the opposite hand forward away from that back knee. Yes. Lots of variations too. Beautiful. And it's fun to see how slowly you can come out and like rewind. Bring the hand back and then tilt up and then release. And then shake as needed, of course. And when you're ready, Set up for the other side, hand to heart, drop the weight into the other leg, bend your knee, choose your grip. Maybe you use the same grip, maybe you go with the other one, maybe you almost fall. Falling is part of the practice. Take your time to find your way into wherever this side wants to take it. It's always an exploration. When you're ready, slowly come out with whatever degree of control you can and shake things up. So different schools of thought on that shoulder thing. Some folks point out that when you rotate like this, you're actually closing the front of the shoulder muscle. You can feel that with your hands, but I do like what it does for the alignment of the leg. So it's the one I prefer. Something else to be mindful of. Your shoulder might tell you that it likes one way more than another. Come on down and have a seat. So let's first sit with legs extended and feet flexed back towards us. Inhale, reach up overhead. And exhale, fold over your legs. If your knees want to bend here, let them bend. Explore deepening the fold with your breath. As you inhale, think of the crown of your head coming forward. As you exhale, think of lowering down. Inhaling, walk your hands up the front of your legs and sit up. Let your arms help your legs open out. And let your arms keep helping your legs. Bend your right leg, bring your right foot over by your left thigh or left knee. Pivot your torso in your sternum at your left foot. Inhale, reach up overhead. Exhale, fold down over your extended leg. Spend a couple breaths seeing if the fold may deepen here. You now we'll play with some arm movements, some binds. Slowly open your left arm out to the side. Turn your head to track your hand. Now rotate your arm just like I was talking about. So your thumb points down and bring your arm to your lower back or maybe 
even to your opposite hip and peel that left shoulder back. Extend your arm, rotate it so it comes up, slide it back over to your left foot or left leg. And now the right arm, sweep the right arm out to the side, turn your head to follow, rotate, bend your arm, bring it to your opposite hip or lower back, peel right shoulder back. So the back of your hand might be on your sacrum, might be on your hip, might be somewhere in between. Might just surprise yourself in reaching your hip. Didn't know you could reach there. Extend your arm again. Rotate, so thumbs up. Reach your arm up alongside your head, over towards your other arm. Yeah, try to keep the arm sort of in line with the ear, not curling forward past the ear. So we're getting at compression in the center of the lower back, right above the sacrum. Compression that happens from sitting. Most of us have been sitting more these past few months. Reach up, out to the side, come back across, and hands meet up. Walk your hands up your leg. Sit up. Letting your arms assist your legs. Extend this one and bend this one. Pivot, aim your sternum at your right foot and flex your right foot towards you. Inhale to reach up, exhale to fold down. Couple breaths here. Open your right arm to the side, slowly turning your head. Rotate your arm, bring it to your low back or hip. Feel your right shoulder back. Extend your arm, rotate thumb up, slide your hand back over to meet the other hand. Open your left arm, sweep it out, turn your head, rotate, take that half bind, feel that shoulder bind. Extend your arm, rotate, reach up alongside your head, over towards the other arm. Reach up and out, come back across, and walk your hands up your leg. Letting your arms help your legs extend this one, nudge them towards each other, bring the soles of your feet together, heels far away from your pelvis so there's a big space here. Reach your hands under your ankles, grab the floor. If you don't have room to do that, you could reach your hands over the ankles and grab the floor. Walk your arm, hands forward using traction in your arms coming into our pretzel fold. Make sure to let your neck disengage and let your head drop. Breathe into that spot above your sacrum. Slowly start to scoop your hands back and press up from the floor. Keeping the soles of your feet together now, draw them in. Bring your heels as close to your pelvis as you can. Interlace your fingers, grab the tops of your toes. Wriggle on your seat to bring the bones in your seat closer to the floor and tilt your pelvis. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Fold forward with your spine long. See how far down the long spine will go. Maybe your elbows press the inside of your legs, nudging your hips open. When the long spine 
Stops lowering, let your neck disengage, let your head drop and breathe into your hips. Inhale, slowly sit up. Let your arms help your legs lift your knees towards each other. Rest your hands out past your hips. Wiggle your feet further apart, maybe to the edges of your mat. Let your knees go back and forth. If you like, for a bigger movement here, as your knees drop down, you might sweep your arm up and lift your head. Now let's make our way onto our backs and set up for bridge. If you've got blocks handy, you could use blocks. You can use one to set space between your feet. Scoot towards your heels, come down onto your forearms, down onto your back. Some folks like to leave a block between their feet. You could do that. I like to just set the space and then keep the feet planted. You could put a block between your knees in the same position. This sets our knees, like our ankles, at the same distance apart as our hip sockets. Press into the soles of your feet. Inhale to lift your hips up into bridge. You might want to go further. Wiggle your shoulder blades towards each other. Clasp your hands and reach your knuckles towards your heels. Similar to what we did with our first Warrior One variation. If you're clasping your hands, release them. Exhale, slowly lower down. Explore, bridge on your own. Inhale to go up and exhale to go down. You can go as high as you want, as slowly as you want. You could repeat that bind with the hands. Take extra breaths at the top. These are all ways to make it more challenging. You can take extra breaths at the bottom for less challenging. You could take a resting bridge, supported bridge. That's the word I'm looking for. You could <laughs> slide a block under your sacrum and come down to rest on it and just let the block do the work for a few breaths. Can bring about some nice release in the lower back and the pelvis. Wherever you are on your bridge, let's wrap up in the next couple of breaths. And after the last time you lower down, just pause there. Reground for a couple of breaths. And you can set your blocks aside if you were using blocks. Bring your knees towards your chest, hug your knees, and rock and roll on your back. And after we do that for a few breaths, we're going to play with our strap. For those watching on YouTube later, if you don't have a yoga strap, you could grab the belt off of a bathrobe. You can grab a long towel, like a bath towel. You could use a scarf. You could use just a regular belt or two belts together, depending on how long your belts are. Imagine people pausing video and rummaging through closets. 
So I checked before class, everyone with me now has straps. You're going to reach your feet up, rub the strap under your feet, and either have one end of a strap in each hand, or some people like to close the strap and make a loop, that's fine too. But what we want is the back of the head, the shoulder blades, and the sacrum on the floor, long arms, long strap, long legs. Don't worry about anything being straight. Just thinking about length and staying grounded. Then point your toes up at the ceiling. Then point your toes down towards your face. Let your feet relax. And slowly slide them apart, keeping them in the strap. And just see how far they might want to go. Take a couple breaths when you get there. Still grounded in the back, still long in the arms. And then start to draw on the strap with your hands and help slide the feet back together. And take your left foot out of your strap, press your left leg to the ground, left calf, left heel, down to the ground. Hold the strap with your left hand, reach your right arm to the side, keeping your shoulder blades on the ground. Now your sacrum will lift. Use your strap to draw your leg over to the left and turn your head to the right. We'll take a few breaths here and just see if the twist deepens itself with the action of the breath. And we did this Saturday at the beginning of practice and we did the extended version. We spent two minutes in each posture. So if you practice on your own at home, you might try that. Two minutes in each of these positions with the strap. Or I say approximately two minutes. Sometimes you use a timer. I've found that if I, if for me, I count 24 breaths and it's pretty close to two minutes. But that's me and my breaths. Let's slowly come back up to center. For the next one, switch hands, grab the strap in your right hand, press your left hand down on the front of your left hip bone. You want to keep the left butt cheek on the ground, let those limbs fall to the right. So we're really opening the right hip here a whole lot. And if the left hip lifts and the pelvis tilts, for each bit of tilt, that's less opening in the right hip. So keeping the pelvis squared to the floor, focuses the attention on opening this right hip. And it might surprise you with your leg touching down on the floor, maybe it doesn't touch down. It was definitely a while where my leg did not touch the ground. And I would marvel at seeing somebody else's leg touch the ground. Now most of the time my legs touch down. You might find with practice, you get into this open position. I just took my hand off my left hip to scratch my face <laughs> and my hip didn't move. So because my pelvis didn't tell my right hip is nicely open and even relaxed. We wanna go nice and slowly to come out of this one. Take your time to bring those limbs back to center line. Lift your left leg, step your left foot inside the strap. Take your right foot out, press your right leg down to the floor. Reach your left arm to the side. Use the strap in your arm to bring your leg over to the right and turn your head to the left. Keep your shoulders grounded. Slowly bring your head and your limbs back to center. Switch hands on the strap. Press your right hand down on the front of your right hip bone and let your limbs fall to the left. So as the limbs fall over, 
arm is long, strap is long, leg is long. And depending on what's going on in your hip, you might keep tension in the strap, or maybe less, depending on how your hip feels, you might relax the arm a bit, not bending it, just not raising it as much. Sometimes here we notice a big difference from one side to the other. Sometimes you get a lot of sensation in the hip you're not working on. I'm feeling this in the front of my right hip at the moment. My left hip is opening nicely. Something going on in the front of the right hip. Not pain, just a tension easing out. Of course, you want to heat pain as an important signal and back away from anything that starts to hurt. It's okay to gently probe against some resistance and find some more ease. Nice and slowly, come back to center. Raise your right leg, draw your knees in, set your strap aside, reach your feet up, reach your hands up to grab your legs or your feet and explore movement in happy baby pose. Or if there's some other inversion you would prefer to do, invert however you like. Invert for as long as you like. I usually like to give it at least a minute. When you feel complete, you can make your way to Shavasana, either a corpse pose or a resting pose of your choice if corpse pose is not comfortable for you today. It's more important to be comfortable than it is to be in this posture. Once you find your comfortable stillness, all you really need to do is breathe. You might focus on your breathing or come back to an intention you set for yourself to reflect upon it. Maybe just let your mind go. Or maybe think about the heart. We did a lot of things today, you might say mechanically, to open the space around the heart. But of course, when we talk about the physical or mental or emotional aspects of ourselves, this is really a false separation. There's only one person on each mat here. Opening the physical space can help open things energetically, emotionally, yes, even mentally. Room to take more in, room for things that reside in that space to move better, move more freely. And of course the mundane, more room for the beating heart, more room for those lungs to fill. How can you lead with your heart today? How can you help keep it open in the rest of your day? What needs to be moved? What needs to be held? What needs to be taken in?
part of what I'm feeling here is an increased amount of grounding contact in the back of the heart space. My upper back is flatter to the ground than usual because of the focus we had today on that space. Start to give yourself some even deeper breath. Let your body begin to move around bit by bit. Allow your movements to gradually grow bigger. Moving mindfully and gently when you're ready for bigger movements. Take your time to sit yourself up. And you can bring your hands up by your heart if you like. And that doesn't have to be like this. Maybe it's like this. Thank you for coming together and sharing practice this morning. The light in me sees and honors that same light in each of you. Namaste. Bear with me for my, my wrapping up chatter. Once again, I'm Leo Bray with Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center. Visit us online on Facebook, Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center, urbanyoga.org. Check out the class schedule, visit the tip jar. And if you're watching later on YouTube, feedback and questions are always welcome for the folks here live and for the folks watching later. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Leo. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. Great to see you all.